I have a question for you. What lurks in the night? Now the answer to that is two very dangerous creatures. The first one is the Immortal Hulk, who is a creature built off of rage, and he shows that in his kit by building up rage stacks and dealing monstrous levels of damage. Now the Immortal Hulk is honestly one of the craziest characters in this game when you're talking about damage output and just overall kit design. Now his kit is one of the most unique in the entire game and for better and for worse, right? Of course there are a lot of criticisms about the Immortal Hulk's kit, especially the damage back that makes him pretty much unusable for Battlegrounds, but in any other game mode that isn't Battlegrounds, he shines as one of the best damage dealers, if not the best damage dealer in the entire game. He is incredible at dealing damage. For example, look at these 60,000 mediums and this Labyrinth Old Man Logan going down in under a minute. That is insane. That is pretty much... Okay, most characters that do it in under a minute have to have a lot of synergies with him, right? This is just the Immortal Hulk by himself. This is just him at his peak, and he is obviously just a broken DPS with no synergies, no enhancements, the recoil masteries hardly affect him because he just does so much damage without them. So it's like, this character is truly one of the best damage dealers in the game. And for PvE, which is anything that isn't competitive, he is going to be your most used champion. And while I was talking, he did that Gauntlet Doctor Doom fight in about 23 seconds. So yeah, he's obviously just just crazy. Um, here we have this Terax fight, and this is a good showing of just how much health this character has. Keep in mind that the Immortal Hulk has the second highest health pool in the game, and at rank 3 it is well over 100,000 health. Now of course, health with Immortal Hulk is kind of a touchy subject because he does lose it very quickly, but if you play your cards right, you can maximize his health and tank things like Terax's Rockfield for example. And that right there was a 35 second takedown of Gauntlet Terax. Now some of these fights are world records I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the Doom fight was a world record so that's pretty sweet. Now we have this Vision fight I think also can be a world record. Like with the Immortal Hulk he kind of just breaks records. That's his thing. You know like World Breaker Hulk? This is World Record Breaker Hulk <laughs> because yeah he is just one of the craziest damage dealers in this game so yeah gauntlet vision so he will eventually get to the sp3 which is supposed to one shot you but if you just take him down before that there is really no worry because yeah we dropped the sp2 we're already doing like what 40,000 plus per uh rage hit i guess and yeah that was 28 seconds not too shabby right it's just like what under half a minute for a gauntlet fight but you'll get used to it with this character it, it it is very absurd right it's like it's stupid damage output it's just like illegal damage output and if this character like worked in battlegrounds and worked in other pvp content he would be the most used attacker in the game obviously like it is no question but that's kind of where the balance comes in with this character like, you get all this damage that is nearly unmatched, but there is a, you know, there, there's a payoff. Not a payoff, but there's like a trade-off, and the trade-off is you lose all your health really, really fast. And that right there was a 29th second Eternity of Pain fight. Alright, and now we have this Destroyer fight from the Spring of Sorrow, or no, Summer of Suffering, I'm pretty sure. This I made a separate video on, but I just had to show it again because it is genuinely insane. This is 1.3 million health, I'm pretty sure, and he takes it down in about 38 seconds. Uh, I have yet to see if, like, I have not seen a faster time. I don't think anyone can do a faster time, and that just goes to show that this character is truly one of a kind, right? He might not be your cup of tea because he has to play at one health for a lot of the fight, but if he is your cup of tea, he will be by far your most used champion because he is just meant to be that. He is meant to be a character that you just take everywhere that isn't, you know, Battlegrounds. But yeah, Immortal Hulk, such a beast. 
And when it comes to a dance partner for the Immortal Hulk, I don't think there is anyone better than Morbius because what Morbius shines in is the complete opposite of what the Immortal Hulk shines in because Morbius is a Battlegrounds attacker through and through. This man was made for Battlegrounds health pools and he is just perfect for so many different mystic fights for example here is him cheesing this mephisto fight and it is a really really fast takedown it pretty much rivals a human torch takedown of mephisto and yeah he is now at one health we bait out the sp1 we go back in and that was like a 35 second takedown of that mephisto not too shabby in the slightest now if that fight looked cheesy to you uh this one is even cheesier this is a rentra fight and with Morbius's psionic glide, how it works is if it's prevented from like a neutralize or something, he will get a passive version of it and this lets him glide continuously. So yeah, he cheeses these characters that have any sort of buff prevention. And yeah, this Rentro is going to go down very, very quickly, very, very soon. So here we bout the heavy attack. Uh, took a bit of block damage, but it's fine. We dropped the SP2, and yeah, one shots. Just straight up one shots, man. It's so, so crazy. Uh, now we have this rank 3 Sasquatch. Um, rank 3 Sasquatch is the highest health defender in the game, so it doesn't get any better than this when it comes to showcasing Morbius' damage output. Now Morbius, I just want to talk about the character in general. When he first came out, he wasn't- he was- okay, he was a bit hyped, right? Because he was the Platinum Pass character, but as time progressed, he was just more forgotten. But here's the thing about Morbius. Just because he was forgotten doesn't mean he's bad in the slightest. I think he is a very good champion still. I think he has a role of being a great science DPS in Battlegrounds. Of course, there are a lot of great Battlegrounds attackers, right? But Morbius just kind of feels different in a sense. And he does have his best matchups that like he is the literal best for. So that alone has like a lot of value to it, right? But yeah, here I dropped the SP2 and it one shots. <laughs> so there we go. That was a 50 second Sasquatch takedown pretty great time uh it's like up there with some of the best sasquatch takedowns now we have this rank 3 wong uh this is normax's wong so i have to do it perfectly because i always got to get a one up on that guy <laughs> but anyway yeah so morbius he's He's very good at taking down pretty much any mystic, even like Mangogs, because if your Morbius is awakened, he can take any bleed immune champion in the game. So yeah, it's very, very good stuff. And yeah, his versatility is just honestly really good. Uh, he takes some skill characters pretty well. For example, Killmonger, he is a really, really good option for. I've done a Killmonger in like 37 seconds. So yeah, he is really crazy for that fight. But he's also crazy for this Wong because look at this SP2. It just one shots, or close to one shots. It There we go. 17,000 medium, and that was a 40 second takedown. Uh, now we have this Mangog fight. Speaking of Mangog, um, so usually the thing is... People say that he needs Max Sig to do these fights, right? But that's not the case at all because with the glide buff, he gets increased ability accuracy to any of his debuffs and that includes the ruptures from the awakened ability. So he is really, really good against these bleed immune characters at just Sig 20 and that is honestly massive, right? Like that is a huge help for Morbius and it goes to show that like, hey, once you awaken him, that's it. You you have Morbius fully unlocked. There is no need for the other like 180 sigs, except for questing where he can just be straight up immortal. So yeah, um, of course it's a great signature ability because of the immortal part as well. But even like a sig 20 Morbius is still very, very strong. But now we have this Hulkling fight. Uh, nothing too crazy here, just a regular... A regular showcase of him versus some non-mystic champions. Uh, he can do, like I said, Killmonger. He can do Hulkling. He does Red Skull, Shuri, Gallon. Like a whole, he does a whole plethora of characters. Right? Like he is a good all-around DPS, and he is good for a lot of fights that not even aren't bleed immune because he has the ruptures as a backup. So it is really, really hard to stop this champion because he can just switch his damage form to a debuff that nearly no one is immune to so yeah it is it's wild to be honest but um yeah this fight's about to be over we go in for the combo or like the glide here and then we drop the relic into the sp2 
And just look at this damage output. <laughs> it's it's quite nice. It just one shots, obviously. So there we go. That was like what a perfect takedown because we won by a second. That is insane. But yeah, this was a quick introduction to these two champions who are going to be showcased very soon. Uh, Immortal Hulk, one of the best PVE characters in the game. Just so good for anything not named Battlegrounds. And then you have Morbius, who is the opposite, who is mainly lesser pve but more for battlegrounds type of fights so yeah these characters are the perfect pairing i feel like so be on the lookout for a big showcase for both of these characters don't know when just yet but just be alert i guess but yeah let me know your thoughts on morbius and the immortal hulk and yeah that's about it for me